going to start with a little quiz, which I got the idea from uh, going down to the family video. They have a little board in there, and uh, they'll have a, a question up there that you can go in, and if you get the answer right, you get a $1 video for free, and it's questions like from movies like Pride and Prejudice, and here's one of them. Did anyone else, aside from Mr. Darcy, want to marry Elizabeth? And the answer, of course, is yes, Mr. Collins did. Now you're going, wow, you knew that answer. Um, that would be incorrect. But I did get a free movie because I pulled out my iPhone and I said, okay, da 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 da, right in front of them. And you know, I felt a little guilty about it. But uh, anyways, they don't have that. They don't have that question. I say all that to say no iPhones for this little five-question quiz. I'm going to start with today. Uh, question number one, which state is bordered by the most states, Tennessee or Missouri? Answer is? Yeah, you're both right. It, it, it's both. They're both bordered by eight. Uh, second question, which state hosted the first World Series in 1903? The answer is Massachusetts. Number three, which of the uh, 48 continuous states is the furthest north? Maine? Nope, that's what I thought. The answer is Minnesota. Number four, which state is the smallest, Rhode Island or Delaware? And that answer is Rhode Island, correct. And the last question is, which, where is the center of the United States? Lebanon, Kansas, or Bell for Quack, South Dakota? <laughs> it is South Dakota. You are correct. And it used to be Lebanon, Pennsylvania, but then when we added Alaska and Hawaii, it did move up to Bell for. Now, I know what you're thinking. It's Easter. Who cares where the center of the United States is? It's like, come on, Jack, give me a message on Easter. Well, um, I don't really care what the center of the United States is, but I do care what is at the center of your life. That is the question that I want to answer. And whether you, whether you, this is the first time you walk through this door or you have known Jesus for decades, I want us to, as we have never before, understand how glorious and what great joy and purpose there is to have Jesus Christ at the center of our lives. And my prayer is that he would become more the center of our lives than he ever has before. And so that's, that's where we're going to go uh, today. Now, I want to I want to get you to evaluate your lives because I know it's Easter and, you know, you're looking at the clock saying we got Easter dinner. Uh, let's hurry this up. And, and yet I want you to think for a few minutes about what is the center? And there's some questions that David Paulison has in his book, Seeing with New Eyes. He calls them X-ray questions. And you can go online and look at those. And I encourage you to do so because it's going to tell you what's the center of your life. Even those who think you, you, you're good, I'm telling you, these are piercing. They've been great for me to look at. I want to give just a few of them to you that you would be able to evaluate what's going on. First of all, what do you want, desire, crave, lust, or wish for? What do you want? Is it, is it just happiness? Is it peace? What, what is it that you want? What desires do you serve and obey? And by the way, we all do it. Every one of us here, you serve something. You obey something. What do you seek, aim for? What do you pursue? What, where do you give your energy? Where do you bank your hope? Is it, is it the things that this world offers? Some people are banking that their brackets will work out, and some people are banking on this or that or the finances or the market or, or politics. What, what are you banking your hope on? What, what do you think you need? If I sat down with you and said, what do you need? What, what would you, how would you answer that question? What are your plans, agendas, strategies, intentions designed to accomplish? In other words, if you have your plan of life, what would be that answer? Where do you find refuge, safety, comfort, escape, pleasure, and security? And we all do somewhere. What or whom do you trust? Next one, where do you find your identity? How do, you, how, how do you do that? How do you find your identity? And how do you define who you are? When you, when you take the time, and if you were honest to answer those questions, it's going to be one of two places. And most of us, it's going to lean more on we find our identity, we find our trust, we find our hope in myself and what this world can offer to you. And 
I'm here to tell you it doesn't work. I am here to tell you that my prayer for all of us is that we would decrease and Christ would increase and that he truly would be the center of our lives because it will change everything. It will change your attitude. I mean, here's the beauty. I know you. I know most of you. And the others of you that are here that are family that are in from from out of town, I've been praying for you. I know what goes on and I know the struggles that are there. And I can just say, if you want to have true joy and peace and satisfaction, that is found when Christ is the center of your life. And most people struggle with this. Most don't don't think about it. And so I want to push you into that corner that you would think about it, that you would consider it. And I want you to, to look at, first of all, what or secondly, what did Jesus do for you? Why does he deserve to have that place in your life? You know, why can't you just live for yourself? Why, why can't you? What, what did Jesus do? What is so great about what Jesus did that he deserves to rule my life, to be the master of my life? He's the one to whom I find purpose and joy in. What did he do? Well, let me tell you what he did. And we've had it explained through song, but God sent his son, Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us, to be the savior of the world and to save your life, to save your life from your sin and from meaninglessness. He did that for us. The scripture says God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. That's what he did. Because our sin was so bad that we can't earn or merit. We can't bridge that gap. And the scripture says God made him to be sin who knew no sin. God made Jesus who knew no sin to be sin for us that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And here's the beauty of Easter. Here's the beauty of the resurrected Savior. When he went on that cross on Good Friday, he took all your guilt, all your shame, everything you've ever done wrong. And we've all done we've all done a lot of things wrong. OK, no one here is perfect. We, and he took all that guilt on the cross. And when we, by faith. Trust him, believe in him, he becomes our Lord and Savior. Christ's righteousness is imputed. It is given to us so I can Say to the saints at cross point, the holy ones, are you holy? And you say, you don't know what happened this week. I fought with my wife. I fought with my husband. I, I, you don't understand. No, I do. But in Christ, his imputed righteousness makes you whole and clean. The very fact that if you know Jesus, you will be in heaven. It will be in Christ's righteousness. And so. First Corinthians 15 says, for I delivered you as of first importance what I received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. And he willfully did this for us out of the joy that was set before him. He endured the cross. He said, I laid down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me. He was not a victim. He willingly died for you and me and myself. Isn't that amazing? If you think about it, it's amazing. It really is that Christ would do that for us. And here's the beauty. He's the one that that made a way. It says in first Timothy two five, for there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all. He's the one who died that we might find a path to Christ. And when we come to the place where we by faith surrender to him. By faith alone, through Christ alone. The scripture says, for by grace you have been saved through faith. That not of yourselves. It is a gift. It is a, it's a gift of God, not as a result of works that no one could boast. I know I'm going to heaven when I die. And it's not because I'm great. It's not because I'm a pastor. Are you kidding me? I have an amazing savior who died for me. And I have by faith said, Lord, I need your help. I need I need your forgiveness. And I have turned and repented and surrendered my life to him. And he has removed all my sins as far as the east is from the west. Jesus said, truly, truly, I say unto you, he who hears my word and believes on, sent, on him that sent me has eternal life. You will not be condemned, but you've crossed over from death unto life. That is what Christ has done for you. He has redeemed you. He has forgiven you. In John 10, 10, it says the thief comes 
only to steal, kill, and destroy. The thief is Satan. And can I just be honest? In your life, you have an enemy. We all have an enemy of our souls. And that enemy is the devil. He wants to take you, and he wants to make you, um, he wants to make you the center of your life. Go ahead, be the center of your life, and he will do everything he can to help on that because that will end up stealing, killing, and destroying you. It will. You, you know it. When you're the center of all your decisions and what you do, it is when you are at your most miserable. But Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and they might have it abundantly. He also said, you, Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. He will set you free. He will free you from the bondage of sin. He will give you freedom to forgive and to love others and to care for others and set you free from yourself that you may humbly serve him. And in that, we find hope and the power to change. Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy in believing and peace in believing so that you may, uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. We of all people should be the most hope-filled because it's only through Jesus and there's salvation and neither, no one else, uh, that no other way in which we can be saved. And I could keep going on with promises and, and different things that Christ has done for you, a benefit package, if you would. He has a future for those that, that know him. But I, I want to kind of wrap this up by saying Jesus is in the business of forgiving sins, transforming lives, giving hope, restoring dreams, righting the ship, giving purpose, rescuing. I, I, and I get to see this happen in people's lives all the time. But he does that best when he is the center. He gives hope when he is the center of your life. So I end with this question. What will you do with Jesus? What will you do with him? I know um, on Mother's Day, I will be here 10 years, which it seems like it went like that. Um, but, but here's what I know. I know people. I do, and, and I know the responses. And I, I know there's churches all around this globe where there are Easter services going on right now, and they are, they're being challenged to make Christ the center of their lives in one way or another. And I know what the responses are going to be, and, and there's several of them. For some, they're going to they're gonna hit the ignore button. They're saying, when's it going to be done? We, we got dinner. Where, when are we going? For some are saying, you know what? And, and I say this to your peril, don't do that. D don't think, I've been doing great. I've been doing great without Jesus. I'm just going to put him on ignore. Really? There are some who are running. And you know the truth. You, you have been taught the truth. You know, you know deep down there is a God and he's been chasing you. And you've been running. And some of you have been raised in such a way that you're, you know. Matter of fact, you would cringe if your own child is running the way that you would, you would run. And yet, and yet you still, you, you love yourself and your stuff so much that you think, I'm just going to run. And my prayer is, is that even this week that you would stop the running and you would allow Christ to be your treasure and your all. There are some of you who want to make Jesus out to be what, what you want him to be. Many people in the world look at Jesus like Mr. Potato Head. And I'm just telling you, it's, just, it's, the, it's the reality. We're seeing it unpacked in our culture today. We're seeing what is going on in the news and in the Supreme Court and how people in the name of Christ are saying, yeah, but you don't understand the way things are. We've, we've evolved as a people. And so we want to remove who we think Jesus is according to the scripture. But let me, let me just tell you something. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. And you, we cannot sit there and say, I don't like his, his holiness. I don't like his justice. I don't like the commands of the Lord are pure. I don't like those. So I'm going to make him, I'm going to do the Mr. Potato Head thing, and I'm going to make him out to what I want him to be and say, oh, here's my Jesus that I like. And yet we see that happening in our culture. I'm telling you, and those of you who have been around, Things have changed more in the last 10 years 
than they had the previous 40 li- years that I lived, and, and it's changing rapidly. And yet Christ doesn't change. And then there are some of you, and here's where I hope we all are, where Christ is becoming more weighty, that he is the center. My prayer is that you would really look at your life, that you would take those questions home and you'd really look at, what am I living for? Am I, am I living for a retirement? Am I living for money? Am I living for comfort? Am I living for me? Am, am I living for my family? Family's great, but you can't be the granddad, the dad, the mom, the son or the daughter. You can't be what you should be in your own power. And it's only when we humble ourselves before the Lord that he does his work. And so we want Christ to be the center of everything that we do. So who do you trust? Who or what do you trust? We can trust the Lord. To whom, uh, who shall supply all our needs? It is Christ. So what do I want? Everything, everything I need, he'll supply. And I want to live for his glory. What, do, what satisfies in life? What gives pleasure? He gives you many great things in this world, but nothing satisfies like when Christ is the center of our lives. What's your identity? Well, I'm this or I'm that. Maybe your identity is your occupation. Really? That's the best, that's the best you could do or where you live or, or some accomplishment that you've done. For the believer, I am crucified in Christ and I no longer live. Christ lives in me. And the life I now live, the scripture says, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And you may be here and saying, I hear you. How do I grow in that? How, how does that, as a believer, how do I get that? I put a little uh, document in your, in your notes that, that I ran across that really makes sense. There comes a point in time where you get the, the message of the gospel. You get it of d- Christ's death, burial, and his resurrection. And if you will grow and your eyes will become aware of God's holiness, his character, I say it all the time, may you have a big view of God and have a realistic view of who we are. And when I see myself as one who who battles with the sin nature and I see my sinfulness and I see my pride and I didn't decrease and Christ increased, then you have a huge view of the gospel who has you. He has what's going on in your life. He has your future. But if you do not intentionally grow and take in God's word to see him for who he is and you just go through life, you're going to have a you're going to have a little itsy bitsy Jesus. And and you're wondering why 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 do I struggle? Why do I why do I this? And, and I'm telling you, it's the same question I have. But my need every moment of every day is that Christ would increase and I would decrease. And when that happens, I get a different perspective. I have the privilege of seeing this family go through difficult times. And there is no greater joy when people face death, when they face surgeries, when they face the most difficult, heart-wrenching situations that you go through. And, and, and you struggle. But when, you, when that parachute opens and you look and you say, you know what? But well, we have a great God. And the more you focus on him, the more he gives you hope and a, and a future and a purpose. And, and you get perspective. And Christ is in the center, and you make it. This year, you have made it through hard times. God will see you through. And so, may Christ continue to be the center of our lives. And then there are some of you. You're, you're new. You, you're just getting it. You're hearing this message. And maybe for the first time, you're saying, okay, I'm going to bow my knee to the Savior. I'm surrendering all. I'm giving you everything. May he do that. May, may you do that this week. I've been, I've been praying that God would work in just one person's life where they would say, you know what? I really am not that good. I, matter of fact, compared to an infinitely holy God, I need a savior. I've been trying to do it my whole life. I've put God, I've hit the ignore button and I've been running from him. But maybe today is the day where you stop and you fall on your knees and you say, Lord, save me. And he will. Call on the name of the Lord, and he will lift you up. You, you, you confess your sins, you turn, and you surrender your life, and he will forgive you your sins, and he will begin to change the price tags of your life so, so you will be living for his purposes 
in, in his joy and his glory. And though some of you are in very difficult places right now, there are some of you that have health difficulties. Some of our people have horrible things that are going on physically. God will see you through. Some of you are struggling with with stuff that's going through your head that you just wish you could be free from. God will see you through. Some of you are in, in need of of financial things, whether it be a job or or whatever the case may be. God will see you through. He will help you. He will take you where you are at as we turn our eyes upon him and he will see you through and he will see you safely home. There's going to come a day when there's going to be no more struggle. And so what do we do until then? We live for him. We, we, we struggle to make him uh, the center of our lives. Next week, we're going to take a, a pause in Luke and we're going to spend four weeks on awakening to worship. Because really, the, the heart of a Christ-centered life is a heart of worship. When you see God for who he is, and, and then we're going to take a week and look at what does that mean when you're not here? Because most of, most of the time, you know, I'm here a lot, you're not. You know, I mean, unless you work here. Um, you're at home, you're at work, you're doing life. How do you make Christ the center of your life? How do you worship him as you go through, you go through the week? And then we're going to spend a couple weeks. How do we do this together? How do we, how do, we do this in, in corporate worship? Why do we do what we do when we have generation from, from George's generation down to these little kids? How, how do we do that? And so we're going we're gonna to take that time that we would look to say, how do we worship our Savior in a practical way that he would be lifted up? Where are you at today? I, I really, a, take those questions home and a, answer those questions. And again, if you want more, you can go online and you can Google David Paulson x-ray questions. He's got about 30 of them that will zing into your soul to know, am I, am I trusting in me and what this world will offer? If you, if you do that, there's no joy, there's no hope, there's no purpose. But when he begins to change, everything comes into focus. And then and then we have purpose and reason and, and he will take your life and he will change it that you would live for him. There's nothing greater than we can do than to make Christ the center of our lives. So I'm going to ask you to stand and I want to pray for you. Father, you know everyone who's here you know every heart you know every struggle whether it be emotional whether it be physical whether it be psychological whether it be relational lord you know everything and you are working in our lives in ways that we don't even understand but we know we know that we can't do it ourselves and so we cry out to you that Jesus Christ would be the center of our lives. Lord, if there is anyone here that has never bowed their knee, that today would be the day where the scales fall off their eyes and they see and they realize, I need Christ. I don't want to live for my agenda and my ways. I want to live for him. Lord, I pray that if we've hit the ignore button, that we would, we would hit it again and run into your arms. Lord, that we would not run from you, but to you. Lord, encourage our hearts. Give us a day where we see Jesus for who he is, a resurrected, living Savior who loves us and wants to change our lives. And Lord, may we surrender to that change. All for your glory and all God's people said, amen.